So we have a patient that presents today um, for all the doctors and patients listening. He has a multi-libular uh, cyst in the lower back, um, inflamed for a couple of days, now has some permanent discharge. Um, it's going to need an incision and drainage. What you do for the procedures, you're going to need some <clears throat> basic supplies, some gauze, some betadine, lidocaine with epinephrine to help decrease the blood flow to the area and bleeding risk, and surgical gloves. One of the first things you want to do is take out your iota form gauze. This is a one-fourth packing, and you cut a couple inches off, which you're going to use later in their actual procedure. And then you could use some of the betadine gauze. You start in the middle, go circular on the way out. Make sure that you're <clears throat> getting a nice sterile area to work in. Although this isn't a sterile procedure, um, you have a lot of pus and infection, you want to keep it as clean as possible. And what I like to do here is obviously you can put the lidocaine in, but you don't want any of this to burst back on you. So. What I like to do is like pick an area that I'm going to inject, usually the area of most fluctuance, which is here. And I like to put a little bit of a gauze pad over it. Um, so that way when you actually inject, it doesn't pop back out or squirt you. And you obviously want to be wearing protective mask and surgical gloves for this as well, for your and the patient's protection. Little poke. You okay? Mm-hmm. At this point, the lidocaine with epinephrine, you could tell it's starting to take effect. You can see the blanching through this area here, and you know that the epinephrine is decreasing the blood flow. You get a little bit of drainage. So you want to go ahead and find the area of most fluctuance. You want to make a linear incision right through the area, and you can see that some of the fluid's popping out. Once you start cutting into this thing, you can just see the infection. You want to cut over the area of fluctuance straight through and have your gauze ready. And then you can express the actual infection out. There you go. And you can see that this discharge here seems more like sebaceous cyst, infected fat tissue, while here it looks more as actual pustular infection from an ingrown follicle. Um, and what you want to do is keep expressing this infection out. Make sure you have plenty of gauze. <clears throat> Keep the infection coming out. And this seems to be a very deep, deep tissue infection. We're getting quite a bit of pustulant discharge out of it. And we'll continue to express the infection. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, hurts a bit. Hurts a little bit, yeah. Yours is a lot deeper than I thought, but we're getting a lot of stuff out here. You're going to be feeling a lot better once we're done. Once you've got most of the infection out, as you can, sometimes like you go in there and probe a little bit and see what other kinds of infection you can get out. Also, you want to make sure that you clean up and pop any of the actual abscess and this looks relatively clean. I want to probe through here. There you go, see? See all the extra infection we got out on this side after you probe? You break up some more of the tissue under. This is all cleaned out here from all that pus and infected hair follicle. And this infected sebaceous cyst is pretty well 
I'll clean that. You want to go around the edges. Make sure there's nothing else in there. See that? And then it's just a bunch of infection. So now you head over and grab your <clears throat> one fourth gauze dressing and you want to actually pack this to make sure that the wound doesn't close and it has a way to keep on draining for the next couple of days. And what we tell patients to do is to take out a fourth of an inch of the dressing every day until the whole thing falls out. This thing will be out in probably a week or so. We'll give the patient some antibiotic pills. Um, although a lot of the literature says that once you do an IND like this, antibiotics are controversial. I still like to do it for a couple of days, especially with the extent of this infection and the swelling redness. Make sure you give them some good pain medicine for relief and have a follow-up in a day or two. Just make sure this is getting better.